Today we are comparing three incredibly popular camera systems, the Sony FX6, Canon C70 and RED Komodo, so you can understand the cameras, their pros, their cons, and hopefully make a decision on which one you want to rent or buy for your next project. It's very difficult to recommend an exact camera and package through a YouTube video properly, so if you want a more tailored quote for any of these cameras, don't hesitate to get in touch with us to talk you through your needs. However, in this video, we'll be exploring a few different aspects of these cameras to help you decide which system may be best for you. We often suggest cameras for a given scenario, but it will ultimately come down to what is important to you, the end user. So with this in mind, I often suggest people to make a pros and cons list for the systems they are looking at, and then a list of the most important features for their work. You will ultimately end up compromising on something, as the perfect camera doesn't exist for anyone but this can help you nail down which camera is best for your work. Here's a quick breakdown of what we'll be looking at in the video. If you can't find the answer to your question in the correct section, please let us know in the comments below. Anyway, let's get into it. All three of these cameras all have fantastic image quality. However, that doesn't mean that they are the same because they definitely aren't. Of course, overall image quality is quite subjective, but there are pros and cons to each camera's sensor and processing. The C70 and Komodo both feature Super 35 sensors, with the C70 having less resolution but a larger pixel pitch, whereas the FX6 features a full frame sensor with an 8.4 micron pixel pitch and a dual native ISO, which makes it excellent in low light. Just bear in mind that when you shoot DCI 4K on the FX6, there is a 5% crop, which doesn't happen when you're in the UHD modes. And if you want to shoot above 60 FPS in UHD, or UHD RAW at any frame rate, the image will be cropped by 10%. To achieve similar field of views that are possible in the FX6 with the C70 and the Komodo, you can use focal reducers with adapted lenses. Canon make their own one, but there are also several other third-party RF mount options now, and they can be a great way to get an extra stop of light for those lower light scenarios, as well as getting part of that full frame look. We've done a video explaining how these work before, which you can check out here. The sensor size and design of each of these cameras is a key difference between them. We have had full frame marketed to us for years now, and with the release of the Arri Alexa 35, it's helped show people that sensor size isn't everything. The benefit of full frame sensors, aside from the design of the sensor, which is a whole can of worms, is the ability to put longer focal length lenses on and achieve wider field of views compared to Super 35. This allows you to change the way you shoot and frame, which is where the key to the full frame look lies. You can achieve similar looking imagery with Super 35 at the longer field of views, but at the wider end, you'll start to see the differences between the two different formats. So what look you want will be a personal choice, and there are plenty of people still using Super 35 and loving it. Resolution wise, I think 6K is a great acquisition resolution, as you are able to either downscale in post or use the extra resolution to crop, stabilize or reframe. But of course, the downside to this is dealing with more data in post. The C70 has the same dual gain output sensor as the C300 Mark III, which results in it having a touch more dynamic range than the Komodo and the FX6. Latitude performance is pretty similar between the three cameras, with the Sony having slightly better underexposure performance. Both the C70 and the FX6 feature rolling shutters, but the FX6's readout is really quick at just 9 milliseconds, whereas the C70's is 16 milliseconds. The Komodo features a global shutter, which means it has no rolling shutter artifacts at all, as it exposes the whole sensor at the same time. Unsurprisingly, the FX6 has the best low light performance, and a higher ISO range. It's possible to go up to 409,600 on the FX6, whereas the highest on the C70 is 102,400, and on the Komodo is 12,800. I would say the Komodo performs slightly worse than the C70 in low light situations. Personally, I prefer the look straight out of the camera that YDR can provide on the C70 over s -Cinetone, which is Sony's more cinematic straight out of camera Rec. 709 color profile. However, there are more fantastic user-generated neutral LUTs for Sony than Canon, which can also result in some really nice quick turnaround footage. I also really like the straight out of camera image possible on the Komodo, when contrast is set to medium and highlight roll off is set to soft or very soft. Honestly though, I've seen amazing images captured with each one of these cameras. So whichever one you choose, the image quality will be fantastic. When it comes to recording formats, all three cameras are fairly similar, but I would have to give the edge to the RED Komodo. RED's R3D compressed RAW format is excellent, with awesome image quality and excellent post-production compatibility. It's also 16-bit, which captures much more color information in the RAW file than the 12-bit files capable with the two other cameras. 
Just bear in mind with the FX6, you'll need to externally record to get 12-bit, as otherwise the camera can only shoot 10-bit internally. You can also capture ProRes internally on the Komodo, which could be great for faster turnaround projects. The C70 has a larger list of formats available to shoot internally, with a good mix of 42 10-bit options and even 12-bit RAW, now since firmware 1.0.3.1. I won't go through them all here, so here's a quick chart. The FX6 has the ability to record in both XAVC Intra or Long Up, depending on your needs in 4K 42 10-bit across the board in pretty much every frame rate. If you want to shoot RAW, you need to add on a compatible Atomos recorder, which will then allow you to record ProRes RAW externally. So overall, the Komodo has the best quality formats out of the bunch internally. The FX6 has the best options when shooting higher frame rates, but the C70 now having compressed RAW does give it the slight edge for some over the FX6. The C70 and FX6 files in post are handled well, especially if you are shooting intra-frame compression. The C70's RAW also performs well, but will take longer to process when rendering or applying effects like water stabilizer. And this is also the case with the RED R3D footage as well. So for faster turnaround projects, you may want to shoot more compressed formats, which luckily each one of these cameras can do. When it comes to the maximum frame rates that each camera can capture, I would say the FX6 has the best options and recording formats in these higher frame rate modes. It can capture DCI 4K up to 60, 4K up to 120, and 1080p up to 240 FPS all in 42 10 bit intra frame formats with autofocus enabled. The C70 can also capture 4K 120, but this is limited to long gop compression, whereas the FX6 can capture with intra frame compression. When you put the C70 into its 2K mode, you can go up to 180 FPS though. I would say the Komodo has the most limited high frame rate options. As with RED's other cameras, as you reduce the acquisition resolution in R3D, you'll be able to capture higher frame rates. This means you can capture 6K up to 40 FPS and then 120 FPS in 2K, but you have a heavy crop at this point. The C70 and the FX6 both have really great ND systems built in, whereas the Komodo does not. The FX6's electronic ND allows you to dial in between two and seven stops really precisely and quickly. The C70 uses a more conventional mechanical system that can go from clear through to 10 stops in two stop increments. The Komodo doesn't have a system built in, but there are plenty of ND mount adapter options available for people who want to use PL or EF lenses instead of RF native lenses. We've done a video about all the options available for RF mount cameras before, so if you want to check that out, you can via the link in the description below. But of course, the FX6 and C70 both have the edge over the Komodo in this regard and make them much better for run and gun scenarios over the Komodo straight out of the box. Physically, all three cameras are very different from each other. The C70 is more shaped like a large DSLR. The FX6 is my favorite physically to hold and the Komodo is by far the most versatile, but really requires some accessories to get usable. Whereas the C70 and the FX6 are pretty much ready to go out of the box. Arguably the Komodo is the most versatile form factor, and really this isn't surprising given its designed purpose of a small crash camera for high-end productions. However, its small cube design does mean that you will need to add some accessories to it to make it usable, and it does lack a lot of the buttons and controls one might want when operating, which the FX6 and C70 do have. We will be going over accessories in a bit though. The FX6 has clearly been designed for people who have used Sony's previous FS or FX cameras. It's well laid out and you have the ability to rebind a range of buttons for quick operation. The top and side handle are also awesome on this camera as they both give you such a large range of control of the camera. The FX6 is just great to operate physically and it's tiny when you take the top handle off which does make it a versatile camera as well. The C70 also comes with a top handle and mic mount but these don't feel quite as robust as the ones that come with the FX6. Physically, it feels great in the hand. It's a form factor people coming from more traditional camcorder bodies will have to get used to, but DSLR owner ops will feel right at home here. When it comes to monitors that come with the camera, the Komodo is clearly the odd one out with a square touchscreen on the top of the camera. This can be used to monitor your image as well as control the camera, but for making sure you are hitting critical focus, this will be difficult to use, though we have definitely used it like this before. With the Komodo, a monitor is a must and a few of them can actually control the camera too, such as ones from port keys and small HD. The FX6 and C70 do things a little differently here though. Both the FX6 and C70 have 3.5 inch 1280x720 touchscreens. The FX6s can be relocated around the body, which makes it versatile and easily replaceable and fixable. The C70s is physically attached to the back of the body and is known for being a little on the flimsy side, but both look good and can get decently bright. The FX6s can be used as a viewfinder with the correct mod or equipment, 
whereas the C70 is a bit harder to get working in shoulder configurations without a proper dedicated EVF. The C70 screen hides the audio gain controls, which may be a bit fiddly if you want to control them while running and gunning. So really, each camera does things a little bit differently. The Komodo can be made into a run and gun camera, but the C70 and FX6 are ready to go out of the box. The FX6 is a more traditional camcorder design that looks like a more professional camera, which is a factor to consider. The C70 is smaller and more inconspicuous than the FX6, and it can also be mounted onto gimbals easily too, without having to stress about the FX6's monitor and audio situation. Though the C70 does weigh a little bit more than a fully stripped down Komodo or FX6 when running it on a gimbal. With the right accessories, the Komodo is a fantastic handheld camera, but you can also rig it up for studio and for your car mounting, as you can with pretty much each of these cameras. The operating system of a camera and the features it has is a large thing to consider when looking at a camera purchase. The Komodo is running a new software system from RED that is so much better than the software running on DSMC2. If you've used the RED camera before and thought it was slow and difficult to use, this is not the case anymore. The Komodo's touchscreen makes it incredibly easy to navigate and operate. It also has all of the exposure, monitoring and focusing tools that you would want from a cinema camera. The traffic lights and waveform exposure tools are great for getting good exposure consistently. The Komodo also has an excellent phone app for controlling the camera and previewing the image in a really nice way. It's fantastic and leagues above every other camera company's companion apps. This is great as due to the small form factor of the Komodo, slinging it into a position that's out of reach and controlling it with your phone is something you really want to do. Sony's menu systems have improved, but I still find them somewhat frustrating to navigate through. The FX6 is definitely one of the better ones that Sony have done though, especially thanks to the first level menu that you can customize. It's fully featured when it comes to exposure tools, but it is a shame that it doesn't have a false color tool. Canon's menu system also isn't perfect, and again features pretty much everything you could possibly want when shooting with the camera. You have plenty of focusing and exposure tools, and everything is just fast to operate. The Komodo has the highest power draw by far at roughly 37 watts, whereas the FX6's is roughly 18 watts, and the C70's max is 14.6 watts. This means that the Komodo will require much more batteries for equivalent run times between the cameras. Here's a rough comparison of run times you can expect between the cameras. All three cameras use different batteries, but they are all decent battery types. The Komodo uses Canon's slightly older BP battery, the C70 uses Canon's BPA batteries, and the Sony FX6 uses BPU batteries. That means you have loads of first and third party options available for these batteries, and the option to rig larger batteries onto the, each of these cameras using the correct accessories. The FX6 and C70 both have a single battery slot, whereas the Komodo has a dual BP plate on the rear of the camera. This allows you to either run one or two large BP batteries that you can actually hot swap as well, or some kind of V or gold mount battery plate on the back of the camera. The Komodo features a very limited amount of inputs and outputs on its body. You have a 9-pin EXT port, single 12G SDI port, and 12V DC input, and then a headphone out and 3.5mm mic in on the side. This is quite limited, but that's unfortunately due to the size of the camera. So depending on your production needs, you may need to grab some kind of expander module to add whatever interfaces you need. The 12G SDI port is also pretty delicate, so make sure to follow RED's practices when setting up your camera, or if you really want to be safe, you can grab an isolator for your SDI. The C70 has a good range of I.O., but the one thing that is missing is an SDI output, which would have really rounded out the camera in my opinion. Otherwise, it's ready to go for most productions. The FX6 does have an SDI, which for some will be a must. Otherwise, it has a very similar set of I.O. to the C70, which again, is great. When it comes to audio, they all have slight compromises. All three of them feature scratch microphones, but have different input options. The C70 has two mini XLR inputs, as well as a 3.5mm mic in and headphone out on the body itself. While it is kind of annoying that they aren't full size XLRs, you can easily get cables to use your favorite XLR microphones directly into the C70, or grab a full size XLR adapter module like the wooden camera A box if you don't want to use mini XLR cables. The FX6 has two full size XLRs on the removable handle, as well as a headphone out on the body. While it is great you have two full size XLR ports, one of the most frustrating things that users find with the FX6 is that you don't have any audio inputs on the body itself. So when you are running the FX6 without the top handle, such as when on a gimbal, you can't feed any audio sources into the camera, which can be frustrating. The FX6 also integrates nicely with Sony's UWP system, which you can use with the MI shoe on the top handle. 
The Komodo has a headphone in and a 3.5 mm mic in on the side of the body, and that's it. So if you want to use another audio source, you will need to either record your audio externally or grab some kind of audio module for the camera. This will provide much better quality audio as well, as the preamps aren't fantastic on the Komodo. We've covered audio accessories in our Komodo accessory overview video series, link to which is in the description below. The preamps in the C70 and FX6 are great, so going directly into the camera for recording audio is definitely a solid option with these cameras. The C70 also has a full BNC for timecode at the bottom of its body, and the FX6 has one too on the right hand side of the body. The Komodo requires an adapter or plate using the EXT port to get a timecode or genlog port. All three cameras offer an autofocus system. The Komodo has the most basic one, as this is really the first time that RED have focused hard on creating a good reliable system. And for what it is, it's pretty good. For basic focusing or talking heads, it works well, but there is no tracking which limits its use case. But RED are continually working on this, and I'm excited to see what they do in the future. The C70 is using DAF1, which means AF isn't as good as the R5, which uses the second version of DAF. But it's not awful. Tracking people and general focus is solid, but tracking faster moving subjects may prove challenging. It's also quite contrast dependent, so autofocusing when underexposed is worse especially when compared to the FX6, which performs excellently in lower light scenarios. Overall, I would say the FX6 has more reliable autofocus performance than the C70. It performs excellently with modern E-mount lenses. It really is very reliable and has solid tracking performance. Both the FX6 and C70 have face and object tracking, but the FX6 has eye autofocus, which the C70 does not. When it comes to lenses, the FX6 uses E-mount, whereas the C70 and Komodo use RF mount. When it comes to lens options, E-mount is so much more mature than RF, so you have much more first and third party options over RF. Canon's RF offerings are pricey, but they are bringing out more affordable lenses gradually. The big drawback is brands like Sigma, Samyang and Tamron aren't making lenses for RF that communicate with the camera yet. There are so many easy recommendations for E-mount now, especially with some of the more video orientated lenses that Sony have been releasing for their systems recently. Some of the older lenses don't perform quite as well as the newer ones, but that's not surprising. The RF lenses I have tested do perform really well, and the control ring on the front of them is really, really handy to have. However, they are expensive when compared to their EL and EF equivalents. But it is still a new system, and it's going to be the system replacing EF over the next few years. So I personally think that they will hold their value well, like EF lenses have over the years as well. RF is here to stay, especially in the stills market, where it will become the new standard for photographers over EF over the next few years. Both mounts have short flange distances, so if you want to adapt EF, PL, or even vintage lenses, you'll be able to get an adapter for that no trouble at all. You will also be able to get focal reducers with the Komodo and the C70 if you want to try and achieve a full frame look with a Super 35 sensor. Each of the cameras uses different media types. The Komodo has a single CFast 2.0 card slot, the FX6 has a dual slot system that can use both CF Express Type A as well as V90 SD cards, and the C70 has a dual SD card slot. Out of the bunch, I think CF Express Type A is the most robust and smartest to invest in now over the other media types. It's also by far the fastest, which means it's future proof and offload times will be much quicker. However, Type A is the most expensive and hardest to get hold of out of the bunch as well. CFOS 2 has been around a while now, so they're pretty easy to get hold of they are still a touch on the pricey side and can get pretty damn warm as well. SD is by far the easiest to get hold of and the most available. They are just the most unreliable and flimsy as well. The C70 and FX6 also feature a range of recording modes using their dual card slots, such as relay recording, which would be great for people who shoot long interviews, as you can switch cards mid shot, and for people wanting to run with multiple cards for extra space without needing to trust one massive card. The Komodo is such a small camera that a single slot being used isn't surprising. Each camera has some pretty key accessories, and we've done a video detailing your options for each one of them now. It's quite hard to tell you what you need for your camera, as your needs may be different from someone else's. So please make sure to check out those videos down in the description below, or drop us a question in the comments. With this in mind, let's talk about the cost of the cameras and how much you may have to spend on accessories to get them to a basic shooting package. When it comes to body only pricing, they are all pretty close. The FX6 and the Komodo are really close in price at just under £6,000, whereas the C70 is around £1,000 cheaper. If we try to match the camera's functionality and take the following into consideration, the price of the camera, an extra battery, some media, a 24-70, some basic rigging and some audio kit, we can see that the C70 unsurprisingly works out the most affordable. 
The FX6 is next and the Komodo ends up being the most expensive because you really need to grab a few accessories to make it a more usable package. While they are still quite close in price, this is something you will need to take into consideration, especially with the Komodo as some configurations can get very expensive. If you want some more advice on rigging up your camera, get in touch with us or even book a demo at our Newman House location where you can rig up your camera with one of our technical consultants on hand to make your rig tailored exactly to your needs. With the ongoing stock shortages, thanks to reduced availability of key components in the production of these cameras, availability of these cameras has been pretty spotty. The FX6 is by far the most back ordered out of the three and the C70 is probably the most consistent stock wise. Deciding whether you should buy a camera now or not really should be a business decision. If you need to buy a new camera now to continue doing your business or do it better and to make more money, then you should look at these cameras as a business investment. So whether you should wait for the FX6 or grab a C70 or Komodo, I would factor that into it as well. When it comes to servicing, all three of them are very easy to get repaired via our pro repair service. We can repair Canon, RED and Sony all in house. So if you have any trouble with any of these cameras, we'll be able to help you out. We've done reviews on all three of these cameras, so if you want to learn more, check them out on our channel. Let us know which you would choose in the comments below, and if you like the video, please give it a like, and maybe even consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.